Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome back to the Cyber Underground. Sorry we missed last week. Hope you uh, liked our replay of another episode, whatever it was. <laughs> I'm Dave Stevens. I teach for the University of Hawaii Kapiolani Community College. Uh, my new nickname now is the professor, no longer the cybersecurity guy. <laughs> so it is the season to get scammed. And uh, I've got someone here to help me uh, explain to you how not to get scammed, how to prevent getting scammed, what to do if you get scammed, uh, some of the pitfalls and some of the things you should watch out for in the season because you're the kind of people that are nice and you're generous and you give and you wanna help other people out and other people, criminals, will take advantage of you if you do that. With me today, Timothy Ames, the CTO of Hawaii Tech Support. Welcome, brother. Thank you. Thanks First for having of all, uh, start right out. Thanks for your service. I know you did the United States Marine Corps. You're an officer. I'm glad you're alive and here with us, and I'm proud you're on my show. You yourself, and you know, I, I had a few run-ins with NPs, but I won't hold that against you, so. <laughs> well, Semper Fi, brother, Semper, Semper Fi, Fi. anyway. Well, it's, it's great to have you, and we have so many things going on uh, today that um, some have specifically to, to do with the Christmas season. Mm -hmm. It's the season of giving. So yeah. people will scam and scam and scam because there's charities out there that they'll try to imitate or they'll make up their own charity or there's some kind of event uh, in another country uh, like the war in Yemen and the starving people and they want to uh, make you give money thinking that you're giving to that cause but really you're just lining someone's pockets. Yeah, yeah a lot of people, they, you know, we're more charitable around the holidays and right. it, you know, it's just built in because we're already in the gift giving mode. So um, a lot of us kind of, we, we look towards our charities at those ends and the, a lot of charities have big fundraise, raising events, uh, fund drives at the end of the year. And yeah, scammers take advantage of that. Um, so, so it's good to stick with the charities you know. It is, yeah. yeah. And uh, I mean, on that topic, we, we have a few tips for cybersecurity, for shopping, because that's what most people do. Uh, yeah, you're the out there shopping, okay. Yeah, um, and since 2016, this is an interesting fact, since 2016, holiday shopping, more has been done online than in the stores. So, so we've made that, we, we, the we crossed the threshold. Been, yeah, we're done. Yeah, yeah and I don't, expect it, I don't expect it to go back down, so. Not unless someone pulls a plug. Yeah. yeah <laughs> that, that would be that would be an interesting event. I, yeah. I talked to uh, my kids the other day, and I said, what would we do without electricity? Because I don't think we even know how to build chairs. Sure. We'd, we'd, we're helpless. Yeah. If I didn't have a fridge, if I didn't have beer. Well, cold beer. I mean, well, it, Germans drink warm beer, so <laughs> I guess it can be done. No cold yeah. beer. I would die. <laughs> um, we we have uh, email scams are really common these days, yes. and people will try to lure you in. And the phishing attacks. So we have a statistic here: phishing attacks have gone up uh, three hundred and fifty percent, and that includes ransomware. That just since last year, that's an enormous amount of new scams that are coming out. And they're, they're creative. Some of them want you to give money to a charitable cause, but others, like we just heard about the other day, they're saying we put a bomb in your business. Mm, yeah. and, and we have a representative that snuck in there and he's watching you. Don't call the police. Uh, send me 20,000 bitcoins or $20,000 right. in bitcoin. That now. takes it to a, a next level, you know? It's, yeah. That's just, that, I mean, holding somebody's information hostage or claiming to hold somebody's information hostage, I mean, that, that's a lot different than claiming to hold somebody's lives hostage, and, and that's just, that's terrible. Um, but yeah, people target uh, vulnerable computers and they target vulnerable companies. Right. So you got to make sure that you have a really good, uh, not only a, a cyber security plan in place, but a good physical security plan in place. Yeah. And, um, and even the biggest companies fall victim to this stuff. Absolutely. I mean, uh, we just heard uh, Facebook uh, has uh, developer apps or developer APIs, the application programming interfaces that they hand out to developers for third parties to interact with their services and use their data, hopefully in a, in a good way. Mm -hmm. But uh, this last uh, API, they just realized it was out for 12 days and they didn't know there was a hole in it. 6.8 million users on Facebook had their private photos shared mm. with these apps. So someone downloaded all their data. Yeah, and that's the problem. So, so even if you build a really secure solution, Facebook is secure. It's secure if it's used as purpose. And But it's not all like one single development team. Nobody has a single development team. They're, you're working on APIs because you want to integrate with other solutions. You right. want to be able to offer your users an experience you know, with other organizations to be able to have like that single sign on, you know, so you don't have to sign on to multiple sites. You just use one, you only have one set of credentials and that's using uh, the OAuth and OAuth2. 
Um, another thing to think about is that when you've authorized Facebook or Google or any of these other you know, providers to use, to, to use your authentication from them for a third party, are you going in and checking, you know, to make sure that you're discontinuing that authorization? Once oh, you I don't think anyone it? ever does. Nobody once you does, say yes, yeah. it's, you're done. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so yeah, that's something to keep on top of. Right, right. And you, when you use that authentication, uh, usually those apps launch on your phone for the first couple of times, right? And they ask you, "We want access to your contacts. We mm -hmm. want access to your photos. We want access to you know, other records on your phone." And if you say yes, those apps can then forever have access to the things that you've entered outside of the app. Right, and just even if the company that you're sharing that with is up and up, 100% up and up, just think of that company is at risk and they're exposed and they get hacked or you know, there's some kind of breach of their information, you're now they connected. have your information. Yeah, yeah, so it might not be malicious on the company's part, Honestly, you know, there's just people, it's just bad code. It's like, you, you should ask for the permissions that you actually need. Yeah. You know, if the companies are asking for more, they may be using it for marketing purposes, they may be reselling your information. So those are really questions that you have to ask by looking at the privacy uh, policies when you sign up for this stuff. Um, and it's getting better, because I, I mean, there's been a lot of uh, push for legislation to make the privacy policies or the uh, agreement policies less than 40 pages, you know what I mean? So that it's right up front, it tells you exactly well, what you need to know. the best sleeping material ever. Absolutely. It's better than like a drug. Yeah. <laughs> you just read the TOS on some of these uh, applications yeah. and you, I'm out like a light, I can't stand it. Yeah. The legalese just boggles my mind, the party, the first part and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but there are little chunks in there, every once in a while we find that it's just a generalized statement saying we can do whatever we want. Yeah, and it's yeah. jaw dropping, right? Yeah, it's it's like, just I, amazing. I, the one that, that gets me and I, I, I I warn people about this, and it's it's a catch-22. I don't know how to deal with it very well. Uh, it's it's one of those things you can't get around. If I go to you and I give you my email address, and your terms of service say we're not going to do anything outside of our scope with your email, mm -hmm. but some fine print down below says we reserve the right to share your email address with other partners. Right. So, if at one time I go and unsubscribe from your site, you could say, well, I can no longer use that email, but I can sell it to. This person. Yeah, or I've already given it to them and you're not getting it back. So I, I've had the experience when I unsubscribe, I have one email that I do this testing with, I unsubscribe, within days I have 10 other emails from other vendors. Mm -hmm. And I find out they're partners of the people that I did the unsubscribe to, so they, they wait and they sell. And it's, it's, it's a money maker, you know, yeah. emails are worth money. And it's a good tip to the folks that, you know, when you hit the unsubscribe button, that shows that you're active in that account. So, that's right. Yeah, a yeah, lot yeah. of it. So, and, that, and that's one of our tips too. So, um, one of our tips for shopping online, uh, especially, is uh, well, let me go over a few of them. Okay. So, the first one, in the first and foremost, would be to use use sites that are you know have a good reputation. So, sites like Amazon, uh, you know, shopping sites that that you go to. Best Buy, or you know, I, I'm into electronics. So, th these are my sites. I go to Target, Best Buy. I go to Walmart or or Amazon. And I know these are reputable sites. I know they have security programs in place. They're big companies. They might yeah, not right. be the they, best. I mean, Target's breached, had breaches. But there's incident response. That, yeah, that they have a plan yeah. once they've been breached. Um, use a reputable sites for two reasons. One, they have an incident response plan. But two, you know they're not scammers. So this is a good season for people to be sending out links that are just too good to be true, you know, you can get a $100 iPhone, or you know, just something that's too, if it's too good to be true, I mean, this is just a life lesson, right? I, it I probably is. 20 or 30 of those a week. Hey, yeah. Amazon is, is throwing you, uh, you know, a $100 gift card just because you've been a customer so long. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of believable because I've been, you know, I bought books with them in the 90s when yeah. they first opened <laughs> up, right? So uh, they were, they were my, my tech book place. And, and so the first thing, I was, hey, that's great. And then I look at the, the email address it's actually from, Right. And it's nowhere near Amazon.com, right? Amazon's somewhere in there in the sub or something like that, but it's not Amazon.com. Or it's just from an email that's just wildly different. And then if you hover over the images mm -hmm. and, and look at the links that you might click on, right. they're abominable. I mean, it's just huge links, but they start out with something that's nowhere near Amazon.com. Right. right. Yeah. So, take our, so our website, for example, our email address is hightechsupport.net. So if I'm if I want to impersonate hightechsupport.net, it'd be really easy to just do H L 
T E, you know, tech support. Or H I G H. Right. You know, however it is. It, yeah, it's, yeah. it's close enough. You know, humans, we don't really read the middle of the words anyway. We we, uh, we read the first letter and the last letter, and our brain puts it together for us. Right. It's a little too good at it sometimes. That's yeah, a little bit dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> right? So, you guys handle uh, a lot of things that uh, small and medium businesses don't want to deal with. And I wanted to mention some of the statistics that actually drive, uh, I think, part of your business model. Let's, let's go over a couple of these things. Now, this is um, a, a study of 2,400 different decision makers and IT companies and InfoSec companies in six different countries reported that 91% of them said that it, there's at least one business disrupting cyber event every 24 months. Mm -hmm. And the average cost of that event is $7.5 million. Now, that, that's up big for over the last what, three, four years? Because three, four years ago, was, you're looking at $3 million per incident. Right, incident. I think in 2014, we're at three and a half. Uh, 2015, yeah. we're at four and a half. And now we're at 2018, coming out of 19, and we're at seven and a half. So it's, yeah. it's this asymptotic launch curve. Right, so it's got to tell you that the attacks are being more, uh, they're, they're better attacks. So they're doing more damage when they do them. And that, I think that's a lot because of the rise of ransomware. It's profitable yeah, now. It's so profitable. if something that's profitable, if you follow the money, Lots of people are going to do it. Yeah. Right. So I wouldn't sell cars if it wasn't profitable. And it's a very low barrier for entry, too. Yeah, right. Because <laughs> low the, barrier. <laughs> you know, the, the attacks that the, the cyber criminals get, they pull them up the dark web, and they're, they're usually exploit packages, right? They're not writing them themselves. They're, they're yeah, going out and buying kitties. them. Yeah. yeah, script kitties. They're going out, purchasing them. And you know they may download a database of email addresses, or it may come, in, you know, it may come as part of the, the, the package that they download. You could so. use something free on a, on a Cali Linux package like Maltigo to mm -hmm. trace you know, all the emails associated with the domain. And it, it's, it's free, and it, it works in seconds. And you, you can do that uh, over and over again and have thousands of email addresses sure. in an hour. Right? Or if you're, if you're lazy like I am, you could just go out and buy a database. You know? <laughs> and, and you know that, there's, so there's a lot of ID. It's cheap now. Yeah, there's a lot yeah. of dark web uh, protection companies. Uh, that All they do is they go out and get these databases, whether they purchase them or just find them uh, freely available, they'll purchase them and they'll store, you know, the, create this huge database of email addresses and, and passwords that are associated with those addresses or credit card information. And then they resell you that and say, you know, would you like to see if you're, you're being owned or not, or if, you've been, if your password has been owned? And if it has, you know, you can, you can pay to at least find out so you know to change your password. And that's, that's the next step, right? You shouldn't be using you shouldn't be using passwords for multiple sites. You shouldn't be using the same passwords. Password for multiple reuse sites. is one of the most common exploit pathways or vectors. For sure, right? because if it's already out there, if I know that you like to use uh, my little doggy uh, for for <laughs> your password or it, it, yeah. with Gmail, I'm <laughs> yeah. pretty sure that you're probably going to use it with Amazon, or at least it's worth trying out. You right, know what I mean? Right. Yeah, yeah. So there's only two paths, right? You can you can memorize a whole bunch of passwords mm -hmm. or reuse them. Or like a lot of people, you have a spreadsheet on your computer that's oh, perfect. named passwords. Yeah, that's a great honeypot. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we recommend um, people use uh, programs like LastPass. Is, uh, it's a password management program. Right. So you enter in all of your, you save all your passwords in LastPass. It's encrypted. It takes a, a master password to get into that database. But it helps you out. It fills in all your passwords on websites. So it makes it so you don't have to memorize it. But at the same time, it's not part of your operating system. It's a separate sandbox right. outside of the main memory area of yeah. your operating system that uh, it's not impenetrable, but it's obscured enough, so it's very difficult to get to. And when mm -hmm. if you do get to it, it's encrypted, like you said. Yeah, and you can yeah. turn on things like multi-factor authentication, where to get into the last pass, you'd actually have to get a text from your phone. Now, that is a great idea. Multi-factor authentication in many different types. Uh, if you get a push notification, if you use something like uh, what is that, Duo Mobile? Mm -hmm. We're using that for UH now. That's a great idea because it's something you have and something you know. Mm -hmm. So if you ha don't have one of the pieces, you cannot get in. Even if you've answered all your security questions and right. tried to do the forgot password, multi-factor, that, that's a good thing to turn on. Facebook has it, Google has it, uh, a Amazon is going to start this now. Um, uh, University of Hawaii that I work for. We just did multi-factor oh, authentication. It's nice. great. Yeah. Uh, it's not across the board, but we're working on it. <laughs> okay, we got to take a uh, one-minute break. We're going to pay some bills and be right back. Until then, everybody, stay safe. And aloha. My name is Calvin Griffin, the host of Hawaii in Uniform. 
And every Friday at 11 o'clock here on Think Tech Hawaii, we bring in the latest in what's happening within the military community. And we also invite all your response to things that's happening here. For those of you who haven't seen the program before, again, we invite your participation. We're here to give information, not disinformation. And we always enjoy response from the public. But join us here, Hawaii in uniform, Fridays, 11 a.m. here on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. Hey, Stan the Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii. And they won't let me do political commentary, so I'm stuck doing energy stuff. But I really like energy stuff, so I'm going to keep on doing it. So join me every Friday on Stan the Energy Man at lunchtime, at noon, on my lunch hour. We're going to talk about everything energy, especially if it begins with the word hydrogen. We're going to definitely be talking about it. We'll talk about how we can make Hawaii cleaner, how we can make the world a better place, just basically save the planet. Even Miss America can't even talk about stuff like that anymore. We got it nailed down here. So we'll see you on Friday at noon with Stan the Energy Man. Aloha. Welcome back. I'm Dave the Professor here in the Cyber Underground. Thanks for joining us again. Thanks for putting up with that break. Those are important infomercials. Uh, we're gonna roll right back in with Timothy Ames, the CTO of Hawaii Tech Support. We're talking about tis the season to get scammed. Hawaii Tech Support. Welcome, buddy. Thank you. Right on. Hey, let's talk about some of the statistics we just went over. We went over a study of 2,400 uh, IT and InfoSec companies over uh, six countries. And uh, they all said that 91% of them had a business disrupting event uh, in the past 24 months. Mm -hmm. Now that, that one's shocking in itself. But then when you go into 60% had two or more of those events in 20 months, two years. Right. That's huge. And when you think about the new, like this new rise in the cost of the average breach, and this is a big one, 7.5 mil, mm -hmm. most medium-sized businesses will fail. Right. Oh, yeah. That's that's it. Yeah. If if that if that uh, breach targets your information, your data, your customer data, and you don't have a way of recovering it because you have, you don't have proper backups, yeah. uh, I, I think that's that's really high. So I've heard one out of every three businesses that go through something like that oh, are done within the next it. year. Wow. And oh. so you know pushing that out even further, I can imagine the you know the third and you know fourth order effects are sure and we're oh well we're, ta we're talking about the the fines you get from banks for every credit card number that gets x filled off your mm -hmm. your so a everyone that gets the number not the right. customer the credit card number gets x filled you get charged like a buck 75 or something and then you have to go in and you have to notify so it's bad pr oh, right, so that, right that's right. not going to be great you no. have to tell all your customers it's going to get out you know folks are going to hear about it in the news and then uh, you're on the hook for you know fraud protection, uh -huh. and then insurance rates go up too. Right. Yeah, and then uh, that, that it leads. Uh, I think 73% of these organizations say they now use a third-party organization to do some kind of cyber assessment, auditing, and. Uh, you know, risk remediation. Right? Yeah, it makes a good sense. So we at Hawaii Tech Support, we do uh, what's called security risk assessments, where we'll go in and we'll run a bunch of scanning tools on your network. We'll, we'll see where the vulnerabilities are, what your patch levels are, and what you can do to make a, a significant difference with maybe not a lot of uh, an investment, hopefully. What's your best bang for your buck? Yeah, yeah what's your best? Yeah. You know, is it just turning on better, uh, turning on your firewall to, to block everything except for the stuff you want to go out? Or is it turning on, uh, you know, replacing your typical antivirus? You know, antiviruses are great to do what they do, and they, yeah. they check the file and they say, does this match something that's in my records as being a malicious file? Unfortunately, a lot of the new zero, you know, a lot of the new attacks, they're only a couple days old. So there's no chance for these there's antiviruses. No signature to update. Out there, yeah. There's no signature out there. Yeah. We've, been, we've been pushing and pushing uh, our customers and, and people in Hawaii to look at more advanced security features or more advanced endpoint protections. Uh, are, so are some, incorporate like AI and things like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. machine learning and AI. So it's not just looking at the signatures of the package, it's actually looking when that program executes. So if you get a PDF in the email and you double click on it and nothing happens, that's, that's a really red really, flag. Yeah, it's a red flag. <laughs> why, why is this not opening? Yeah, right. Uh, a normal uh, AV, uh, first generation AV. Um, yeah, I'm not going to target anybody. It's Microsoft, uh, Ma McAfee. You know, they're not really made to look at what's happening after the file is open. You know, what what are the heuristics, or you know, what processes is that one file spawning? 
Um, things like Carbon Black, Sentinel-1, uh, which is what we use because it has 24-7 uh, monitoring with uh, our uh, security operations center. Oh. Um, uh, silence. These are the next gens, right? These open up files. They could open them up in a sandbox and see, hey, this is trying to start another process. That's not normal. A PDF shouldn't be starting another process. It like shouldn't launch Notepad. Right. <laughs> right. And <laughs> why? Or, or PowerShell. Yeah. Right. right. And PowerShell, right. which is built in. And yeah. most people are just running uh, their, their workstation as a Windows uh, power user, like a admin, right? Yeah. And these programs, I mean, these viruses, they could send thousands of commands to your computer in just a short amount of time that's just opening you up wide open is like a turkey. It's so much for a small business owner. Say if I like I have 100 employees and, uh, and that's about a medium sized business. It's so much for me to, to deal with to say, gosh, I need a couple of cyber people and I need to spend all this money and yeah. I need to make all these investments and then I need to do these audits and we're always working. It's always this running game. And I just want to do my business. Yeah, you got to separate the what is your what's your organizational IT versus what your organizational you know cybersecurity is because they're not always one and the same. Right. Cybersecurity does fall in the realm of uh, information technology, but it's a very specific realm. Um, uh, not every IT person is going to know security just like well, I mean, they'll have a good fundamental understanding of course you know right. good IT folks do but not the specifics right and, and you know maybe not have the products on hand or maybe not have the procedures on hand may not have the regulatory you know knowledge you know mm, what's right yeah that's a big yeah, one too yeah. so you know um, especially for like defense finance you know people with regulatory so yeah there is a lot of outsourcing we get a lot of uh, requests to handle just cybersecurity you know, they're yeah. happy with their internal IT, but with IT in general, though, extra. I mean, you're talking about uh, the simple stuff that just could be a waste of time to a lot of people, and has been a major source of a vulnerability over many large organizations. Let's take Windows updates. Okay. Right. I didn't. I didn't want to go from Windows 7 to Windows 10 because mm -hmm. it cost me a whole bunch of money. Well, the the National Health Insurance, uh, and NH, what is it? NHI. NHI, NHI for for Great Britain. Mm -hmm. That was their excuse. We didn't want to spend the money to go up, and they got attacked by WannaCry. Right. Like the whole thing went down, and a ransomware in one patch. It was just one patch. One they were missing patch. one patch, but it just opened up wide up. Well, Maersk I, also got hit. You know, Maersk is the, oh, the, the freight line, right? The yeah, freight line. Yeah. So yeah. the those kind of decisions are are costly in the long run. And so if you're thinking short term, you can't really get around that. But some of these business owners now, they can come to you and do a managed approach. Mm -hmm. So all their workstations, they turn them on every day, you're making sure they're all updated, right? The, the first, I think the, fir the front line right. against the attack is to update the system with all the known patches. Yeah, it, right? it's not, it, you know, it, they're talking about, when your IT experts are talking about, or your you know, industry leaders are talking about business disruptions, sometimes patches can be a business disruption. If That's you just, true. If, yeah. if you're just applying patches as they come out, I mean, that could cause problems right there because they don't always play well. And it's a really a managed approach for patch management, I think is one of the key issues uh, for resolving 95% of your vulnerabilities. Uh, because if, if they try and run the program and the, the vulnerability is not there in the operating system, then the program's just gonna do nothing. Right, so yeah. most hackers out there, you know, the beginners, the script kiddies, they're gonna go to something like Exploit DB by Offensive Security, and they're gonna download the patches, that are, I mean, all the exploits that are out there, mm -hmm. and they're gonna say, okay, Windows 7, it's 32-bit, and it's this version of IE8, uh, oh, yeah. and so I run this exploit. And if you've upgraded your systems to Windows 10, or if you've applied the patch that overcomes that vulnerability, that script kitty can't do his work. So it, you've, you're right, 95% of the stuff is gone. You're dealing with the 5% of the hackers that actually write their own code. Right, and those, those, are, you know, those are more difficult, but if you, can re, if you take 95% of your resources and apply it to that you know, 5%, then you have a better chance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you guys do that, right? So we do. The, if I say, if I had 100 workstations, and I said, look, I don't want to think about this anymore. I want a cloud environment to secure. I want a backup rotation. I want a security plan. I want you guys to manage my workstation. I'd say call Hawaii Tech Support. <laughs> <laughs> right now. It, what, what I don't understand is why people don't do this more. Because when, when you look at the cost analysis of this thing, right, yeah. you can go down this, I'm doing it all myself. Or you can say, I'm doing this with Hawaii Tech Support. Right? You do this like a two-year plan, and the cost is going to even out. 
Yeah, well, it's going to even out really quick if you ever get hit with the you oh. know, ransomware. Yeah, it's, it's so gonna... that tips the scales easily. However, if you don't get hit, that two-year plan, the cost could be the same. And most people say, well, why should I do it then? Because, you know, I'm not really getting anything out of it. Well, one, you're not getting hit. Mm -hmm. And two, now you get to concentrate all your resources on doing your business. Right, yeah. Right, I get to do what I want to do. I get to do running my food trucks. I get to do you know, my hotel chain or selling automobiles or, you know, whatever my business is, I can do that instead of concentrating on IT. Yeah. Right? I can have one or two IT guys and the rest is just you guys. That's, that's what usually works out. So especially with larger organizations, they already have an internal IT team and those guys are great. I mean, they know the environment. They've been working in there for, you know, many years in some, in some cases. So they know where everything's at. Right. They're, 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 perfect asset on the ground. They and probably they, ran the cables. Right, right. yeah, so it's like, if, if you need some, uh, you know, tribal knowledge in this network, it, right. those are your guys. Uh, but at the same time, you know, people use us because we offer a little bit more service. We, we do things like, uh, we're your virtual CIO, so we can help you out with the bus business decisions. You know, we can help you out uh, by taking over your management, by becoming your help desk, you know, letting your, letting your internal guys focus on the business part and letting us focus on just keeping it running, keeping yeah. it operational. Well, one of the biggest costs out there is running some kind of help desk. Yeah. I mean, that the rotational stuff. Economy of scale, yeah. we, that's, that, and I think that's why we can do it for you know so affordably is because we have a large economy of scale. We can have- It's no know, longer like that. You have to outsource if you're gonna succeed in your business now. Mm -hmm. You cannot scale without outsourcing. Right. Cloud's part of it. What you guys do is part of it. And, uh, and security's part of it. If I want to open a business and scale, I have to outsource things. I'm not going to open my own human resources department. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to have my own legal team. So I'm going to go out and hire Hawaii Tech Support. Yeah, and you do don't have to pay IT. our insurance. You don't have to pay our, uh, you oh, know. <laughs> right, that's huge. That's huge, right? Right, it's yeah. all It's all in the cost, and I don't have to think about that. And if I can concentrate on my business, shipping things back and forth, yeah. or you know, selling surfboards, I'd rather do yeah. that. Right? It ends up, you know, at the end of the day, it ends up, in most cases, being hi cheaper to hire an MSP to do your work than it does to hire an employee. MSP, Unless you already have... Managed service provider. Managed, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, yeah managed yeah, service okay. provider. <laughs> so you have your ISPs, which are the ones that give you the internet, and we're the ones that, you know, manage the back end. Right. Um, all, all the servers and routers and switches. And it becomes more affordable, because if you can hire us for, you know, whatever it is, say it's $1,000 a month for all your systems, or you can hire a person, uh, you know, a new employee that will cost more. Um, and comes with a lot more liability. Comes with a lot more, yeah. And, and <laughs> we're easier, it, we have to work for our business, you know, every every month. We have to work to get you on the next month. So right. we're easy to fire too, you know. We're not the uh, only people in the game. That's right, it's a CapEx yeah. bottom line expense. That's right, right. it's, it's cap, uh, It's a, yeah, it's operation, turning your capital expenditure into an operational expense yeah, is huge a, too. For accounting yeah. purposes, that's huge. Why don't you take the last 30 seconds of our show and just do a promo for uh, Hawaii Tech Support. Tell us what you're all about and what you do and what you want to do for us. All right, so Hawaii Tech Support is a uh, local managed service provider. We provide small and medium-sized businesses uh, in all industries, so many verticals, uh, with 100% IT coverage. Uh, that's the, anything from 24-7 help desk support to advanced security features, uh, the, the stuff we were talking about with the you know security incident event management, the correlation. So, yeah, if you if you have a business and you're just anticipating, you know, growing, or you just kind of want a little bit more, you know, in the IT department, a little deeper bench strength and a little bit more response time. And you can you know, scale up and down with the business. Yeah, absolutely. So especially with the cloud, right? I need a whole bunch of storage and processing today, but tomorrow I don't need it. We've been using Azure a lot. We've been That's migrating Microsoft's entire cloud, Microsoft's yeah. cloud, yeah. and we're moving entire. Nobody's having servers on site anymore. If they're getting decommissioned, we say, you know what? Let's just move them to the cloud. Yeah, it's about the same cost right now, but something tells me that Azure is going to continue to, you know, cloud computing is going to continue going to go down, down yeah. while the hardware is going to stay about the same. Plus you're talking about electricity. Yeah. Yeah, and then the house. Air and conditioning. The cooling and the, if you're yeah. in the floodplain, you know, oh my gosh, yeah, all that yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for yeah, being on thanks. the show, man. Yeah, I appreciate it, Dave. Uh, Merry Christmas and uh, aloha. Aloha. Uh, thanks for joining us, everybody, on the Cyber Underground. Tune in next week for another exciting episode, and uh, stay safe.